My name is Gertrude Jan Sakatruta, Kasote Mufana. Uh, I have so many names. And uh, I live in Kitwe. I do come here often uh, to have prayers and just to worship. And uh, But for today, the reason why I came is that there's, uh, there's so many challenges that we are facing as a family, as individuals, but commonly challenges that affect everyone in one way or the other. So I was here last, uh, not last week, the other week, but I was late. I couldn't register on the prayer line. I came about 15 hours. So I decided to come back today. So the challenges that I have, you know, my, uh, basically I can say it borders on uh, ancestrals. Because my mother and my father, they both come from, uh, you know, royal, royal families. And uh, that in itself has affected us so much. And uh, we, we have had one ch challenge after the other. About in, within seven months, I lost my two young sisters. The first one died in an accident, and that was just before the wedding of my daughter. We had Chiranga Mulilo on Saturday, and she died on Friday. Then uh, Lucky, Lucky dreamt that, uh, dr Lucky was beaten in, in her sleep. She, she, felt, she felt something beat her in her sleep. When she woke up, she couldn't find what beat her in the sleep. She removed the blankets and everything, but she couldn't find what beat her. But there were two marks on her left hip. We, they were like snake bites. And, uh, but she, unfortunately, she didn't tell anyone. By the time she came to, to tell us that she was beaten in the night, it was too late. But as God may have it, she passed on the following day. So we know these are not just uh, dates that can come up. We know they are premature dates and uh, they could be connected maybe to ancestral spirits or something. We married in February. And from that, we have had this uh, uh, from the time we buried my, my young sister, I can say in, in February, my husband started f you know, feeling sick. So we thought it was his asthma and his, uh, the blood pressure because he's hypertensive and as well as asthmatic. I took him to the hospital, but in a nutshell, we've been through a lot. Uh, we went to Lusaka, f to the heart hospital. All the tests that were conducted were normal. They came out normal. Until recently, when one of the doctors uh, demanded to do one certain uh, test, then he said, no, actually, the problem that he has is called, uh, in a medical term, it's a gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, which means between the esophagus and the, the stomach, the sphincter doesn't close completely. So he has a reflux of acid in the stomach and a reflux of the stomach content back into the system coming to, to his uh, throat. So he has had that problem for some time now. And uh, so I decided, let me go. Coupled with all these problems, you know, my family, we, I can proudly say we have been to school, at least all of us, that we were f 15 of us and uh, some are deceased now, but all of us went at least to the stage where we go, we went to college, we started work, others are still working. But even if they are working, those who are in, in employment, some are teachers, they are degree holders, there's no promotion. Each time they are about to be promoted, they are told, no, a letter is done, the letter doesn't come, somebody else ends up being promoted. And also, we are, I have retired, but there is nothing to show for it that I was one time in employment. So there's this spirit of poverty, the spirit of stagnation, no progress, and uh, dates. You know, you work, but at the end of the day, you, you amass so much debt that even the common 100 kwacha you are failing to pay, even 50 kwacha you are failing to pay, it's so, so embarrassing. And for us as children of God, you know, it's, uh, it's <laughs> I don't know how I can put it, but it is something that, uh, that happens. Y you, 
especially for them that are working. I have retired myself. Each time I try a business, it goes down. Whatever I try to do, it goes down. But for those who are in employment, they get paid, but they still have to, to borrow from somewhere. It's not something that we we really I, I don't I can't explain how it happens, but somehow one will have to find themselves in debt. And you you could have money, but the moment you have money, even if you have debts, you can't even remember that you are you are owing somebody money. After you've used that money, that's when you re, you realize, oh my goodness, I haven't paid this person, I haven't paid this one. Now for you to cover up. You have to borrow to pay these dates, to settle these dates. So it goes on like that, it goes on up to like that. So I decided, and there is also my, in our family, our my brothers, my sister's children and their children, they drink so much. It doesn't matter whether it's a boy or it's a girl, they drink. And it doesn't matter what kind of beer for as long as they get drunk, intoxicated, that is all that matters to them. It could be Lutuku, it could be Mosi, it could be Kachas, oh, uh, uh, Chibuku, or whatever. If it, it is locally brewed or traditional brewed, when as long as they can drink, that's fine for them. So you find that uh, even we, they've been to school, but they cannot go to work, they cannot be employed. They are employed. Some of them are just end up like uh, guards, but these are grade twelves. They cannot even go to college, so they end up just like that. There's so much stubbornness and there's even stealing. Now the the issue has uh, has so much escalated, especially in stealing. Even children who are necessary going find they are stealing. Uh, they search your bag, so when you, you, you visit, you still have your bag with you. You cannot say, put this bag aside, because you have, you're afraid you might find your transport money missing. So coupled with all these things, I, I decided, let me just go. We've been praying as a family. We pray from 21 to 22 hours. So I decided, let me just go to Forge Cup and stand in the cup for the family. And we also have a court case for my young sister, which is pending. So I said, let me go and stand in the gap. So basically, in a nutshell, those are the challenges that brought me to this place today. She loves this woman so he much. He loves her so much. Okay, the man loves the wife. You are not happy. No, 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 no. no. Okay, touch the system that you want to damage. Touch it. Touch it. Remove your rubbish. In the might name of Jesus. Remove it. In the might name of Jesus. Move it. Remove your things. In the might name of Jesus. Remove it in the name of Jesus. L remove everything. Restore our altars again. Yeah, we cry. Restore our fire again. Out of him. The 
Get out! In the right name of Jesus, you need for the man vomit it out. Restore, restore, restore. Yes, we cry. Restore our fire again. Restore, restore our love for you again. Oh, judge, return, return to the love again. Oh, restore, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, 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 restore. Holy Ghost, restore, 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 oh, restore, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, restore our prayer lives again. Uh, you know, when I walked in, I said, uh, it must be today or never. It must be today or never. I came to stand in the gap for my family and my husband. My husband has been sick. He has been very sick. We tried everything. Like I said, we went to Lusaka. They, because of his, uh, the hypertension, they thought maybe it's the heart failure. We went to the heart hospital in Lusaka. But the investigations there were normal. We went to Coptic Hospital. They said we cannot repeat these tests because they were recently done. Let's look at his hormone profile. They did that. It still came out normal. So basically every, uh, every investigation that has been conducted has been normal. So for me, that is not normal. It's abnormal. So I concluded this is not just physical. It could bother me on the spiritual. That's when I came, standing in the gap for my family and my husband's health, that he should get better. Because now it has reached a point where he's failing to eat. He can't swallow. And because of the asthma, sometimes he even fails to breathe. So that's why I came. But I know for the when the man of God talked about uh, anointing water or oil, I know that he can use especially water. I, I felt a burning sensation right down in my throat to the stomach. And I started to choke. I, I, I'm still having the same, <clears throat> like uh, you've had sore throat. My, my throat actually is patched. It's like, it's very, very dry. So that is what has given me the assurance that all is well, that it is done. Nothing is impossible with God nothing at all there is nothing that he can fail to do for us especially when we walk in faith and righteousness when we believe that he is the reward of you know of them that diligently seek him so my encouragement would be no matter how long it takes we should never give up we should never ever give up in, when we pray, I've been here myself several times and uh, it's like you go back home, you're feeling like nothing happened. But that doesn't mean God has not done it. The, the manifestation will surely come. It may, talk, it may take a little bit longer, but eventually you will realize at different end. So pain is suddenly takudi. So we should keep on believing and trusting in God. There is nothing that God cannot do.